Good afternoon. Hi, I'm a colleague of Kenza. We're from the same lab, but at the same time, also working for our Department of Economics, um, Management um, and Economics. So um, I have a background in natural language processing and economics. And with the knowledge of uh, graph theory and computer science, I also do meta science studies, meaning uh, we, um, we, do, we, we, we try to evaluate how the science community evolves as one and how research can be done, or if not better. Um, so this is how I self-evaluate myself. But um, so the, the pattern mining thing I work uh, in my PhD uh, dissertation is looking at the graph structure data in various types of networks. But today I'm going to be presenting um, um, XFORT, which is a explainable um, fraud detection prediction system we built together with eBay. Um, it's not online yet, but hopefully uh, at some point it's going to be in real production of eBay. Um, the work is accepted at VODB 2022. 20, uh, if you go to the conference, you will see me there. There is a much extended version of the presentation, but you can scan this code and get more information. Um, so a very, very brief introduction of GNN. Thank you for the question. So there are different types of GNN that you can use Kenza's um, framework to explain. You might see these buzzwords in the literature. So we have GCN, GAT, GraphSage. And they're applied in many applications like recommender systems, knowledge graph, and fraud detection. So the buzzwords we, you remember, remember from my talk is there are different ways to construct a graph. You can do it uh, with a homogeneous graph or heterogeneous graph. You can put uh, features and labels on the nodes and the features. And also, you can do uh, directions at edges. And we remember from the convolutions of uh, the images um, that's how we do it, right? And you can also do it on graphs. So here you have the message passing across different nodes and you have the aggregation. And in GAT, you have the self-attention that's already mentioned in other talks. And last but not least, people also look at the different sampling strategies that can be applied um, in this large amount of data sets. And uh, what we do first, when we start working with eBay, is we try to uh, think of these um, three paradigms. And in terms of GNN, it's extremely costly to, to train. Um, and it's also hard to interpret, but still why we do it, because it requires less human effort and it's easier to generalize, especially if you have this interlinked transactions that you wanted to make sense of. So uh, our goal is to help the human um, experts in a business unit to understand this interlinked transactions better. And hopefully we can uncover some uh, fragile patterns that's not seen in the uh, ML systems or rule-based systems. And our contribution is we have trained a huge graph oscillator in a distributed setting, and we brought the ideas from the uh, transformer and also heterogeneous graphs. And we did um, a benchmark study against human annotators, and also we show that this actually works in production, or could be worked in production. So XFORD is our system. It lines um, on the right-hand side, um, the upper right-hand side. So it has it been like the really uh, largest heterogeneous graph that's ever reported in the ML workloads. So we're talking about 1.1 billion nodes and 3.7 billion edges. And if you look at the fraud rate here, so it's not the real fraud rate you, you will get on eBay, but it is the uh, the, the, the downsampled fraud rate. Um, and so we first took a transaction log, and then we look at the entities that a buyer will use when a transaction is made. So there are emails they use, there are payment um, tokens, there are shipping addresses, and also there's risk-related um, transaction features that are generated by the in-house system. Um, so we threw all this in the graph contract, uh, con constructor, and then we build a detector on that. And as Ken's already mentioned, so the, um, the weight of the explainer uh, we take that from the, the, the detector, so we don't retrain the explainer. And then you can use the explainer to generate graph explanations by combining also the topological uh, features that is task agnostic from the network. And as I said, we also benchmark this against the human annotations that the experts generated. Um, so our performance, it's scalable, so we would put, would run this on uh, different sets of uh, numbers of machines. So you're seeing here um, eight machines. So it is with a reasonable fast speed and you can have the best performance across this, um, this baseline. And what we are talking about here is that if you give uh, three faults to uh, the business unit and one of it will be um, a true fault. So this has really helped the experts to reduce the efforts they have to spend looking at the, this. So this is what we give to them. And uh, with each edge, we show that, that the thickness represents the importance of the edge. And you, you can also um, investigate the entities uh, with their related features. So this has really helped them to catch the potential frauds that are missed by the rule-based or the machine learning systems. 
Um, so this is my um, reference to the paper and my contact. I'll, I'll be here for the uh, next two days, so you, if you have further questions, catch me, and we can discuss. Thank you very much for the attention. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> and we have time for, uh, for a few questions. Yes, sir. Exactly. So, the, so the question yeah. is, uh, when it comes to the physical address, uh, what, what uh, features are you extracting from the address? So we did wor word embeddings on it, and we also did the, the, the risk-based um, system, so it automatically identifies the system. But on top of it, we also stack the word embedding features from the addresses. Not the no, not yet. <laughs> Other questions? So tell us a little bit, we have a, we have a, we have a minute or so, tell us a little bit how it's going to be rolled out and uh, what do you think the implications are going to be of this? Uh, so I'm not a representative from the eBay team, going to be really careful about this, but, but for me, um, I think we learned from, the, from this journey with them that these things in the, in the academia had, have to be tested at industrial scale and we have to really run it against the, um, the simple baseline. So we do see that GCN is still powerful in this case. But um, if you can get more um, um, accuracy or AUCs by uh, scaling out, um, you might be worth trying out the more complicated models. I think that's what I learned. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks again. Thank you.